Welcome back, everyone. This is the last series of the evening. My name is Susie Kim. This is Wolf Schroeder, and we are here to bring you now Run versus TCSG, the Coalition Singapore. Neither of these teams have won a series yet, so we're going to have to see if these two, uh, we're going to find out which one will be the first to win in Gold Series here. Obviously, TCSG does have a win, but this team right here, Run from Hong Kong, with uh, such sexy names as Cognac Wine, the Scyther lineage, <laughs> Calcium Oxide, Sky, Kelvin, Blackhawk, we one two three four five six Keith and Cud. They just uh, they haven't been able to pull through just yet, Susie. No, they haven't, and it's uh, you know I, I love this icon by the way, and it's uh, it is great. It, it's a uh, and you're right with all these high caliber players, like you said, some of these guys have shown some really good play. Um, however, we can't see them actually coagulate into a good team. The coalition here in Singapore, I almost want to say we haven't really got to see them play all that much. Well, one of the games that they were scheduled to play, they didn't have to play because uh, Elong didn't show. Um, Lakushime, Lost Baby, Roy Hamiya, Mafia, Haku, Baby3334, Krizib, and uh, who could forget, Roby1 Kenobi. Roby1 Kenobi. The team <laughs> is solid. Uh, the problem is that sometimes they seem to lack cohesion yes. uh, on some of these maps. Yes, definitely. And so now it's kind of like the battle of the who... How do I say this nicely? It's the battle of the who actually gets points. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that an okay terminology? Well, it's, it, I feel like it's just like who's... I'm not the worst. Yeah. You're the worst. <laughs> Who's the I'm not the worst it's battle like, here? You're you're the worst or like say if uh, if run wins actually they tie with coalition but at least they can say I'm better than you and you get my points for free. Yeah, definitely. I beat you to get all the points <laughs> I have. For sure. And and I don't want I don't want to take too much away from these two teams because <laughs> it is still very early, but we can't lie to the viewers. They have been underperforming and uh, I'm hoping they have they come to bring something to the table today. Yeah, me too. I mean, uh, this is actually, this is, has been what we've been waiting for for the last two weeks, uh, just to see how the, the two teams who don't have as many points, you know, how badly do they want it? You know, how much are they willing to practice to try to get that edge at least, like you said, to not be the bottom of the ranking list? Yeah, um, this is the sort of thing is going to matter for future tournaments and things like that, who gets invited and what happens and and how seriously the teams take the league. And, you know, maybe if someone really shines on the team and his team isn't doing well, another team picks him up. Yeah. Because right now this, the world of tanks is very regionalized in Asia just simply because of the language barrier. Language is very important. Uh, but, you know, maybe one of these players on one of these teams does insanely well. Maybe one of these Hong Kong players can invite to join Elong in the future. Maybe that's his dream. Maybe. So he's got he's to do his best. Yeah, that is actually kind of cool. You know what's kind of cool is that Elong Gaming is playing on the Asia server, even though China has their own server. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm just wondering is, if it's because Elong just pr prefers to play in English? Oh, uh, it could be. Um, it also could be the level play is higher outside of China. Mm. And um, I really don't know, to be honest. I mean... I would never say otherwise, considering that Elong is from China and they're the strongest team. Exactly. So, uh, it may be they play on both servers and they're kind of secretive about it, kind of quiet about it. Really, really hard to say. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, wherever they like to practice, they're getting good practice for sure because they're definitely the best at this moment in time. All right, well, this first map is going to be back on Mines again, and we have Run versus TCSG. Run um, on the attack first. Yes, they are on the attack first, and uh, Mines being the map that we did see a little bit earlier, um, very technical map, and I'm wondering if they have technical strategy to be able to, you know, push through and show us on this map. So... Who are you thinking, actually? Who are you favoring here? Predictions and uh, scores. I'm going to predict Coalition. Um, I'm going to predict Coalition. Me too. I think, I think that's that's going to be it. But we'll talk about that a little. I'm gonna, I want to see how this first game pans out first. Um, so let's go ahead straight into game number one. Okay, we are on... Mines, set number one, run versus the Coalition Singapore. And let's take a look at our tank list. Two IS-3s for run, two light, those three lightweights, excuse me. An AMX 1390 and the Burt on Kelvin. The first time we'll see run roll an SPG. And for the Coalition, they are rocking two IS-3s. 
an AMX 5100, two lightweights, three lights, and their own BERT. Although on the mini map, I don't see them moving, so hopefully yeah, we don't have a disconnection I'm, problem. I'm kind of worried as well. It looks like Coalition is not Yeah, it looks moving. like they DC. Uh, yeah, I think they are disconnected. Um, so we're probably going to... Uh, Gonna, Hopefully someone can let them know beforehand so that the game doesn't go on yeah, we're just all gonna, the way. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and um, restart the game for sure. Yeah. Um, and as soon as uh, as soon as they get to those tanks, I'm sure they're easily going to be like, oh, okay, never mind, this game is not real. So, oh, they're on the wrong position, so they spawn on the incorrect side, so they're just simply not moving uh, because they're like, okay. typing in chat like, hey, this like, is not Like, that's not where we're supposed to be. to be, gotcha. Yeah, we got too bogged down in the tanks there, I guess, didn't really... I was like, why are they just not moving? I'm staring yeah. it down at my, my uh, screen here, the monitor. Okay, so Elong is supposed to be spawning on, or sorry, excuse me, Run is supposed to be spawning on attack, but they're spawning on defense. So that's, uh, that's what happened. I gotcha. There. Okay, so we're just going to wait for them to remake the games. And, uh, okay, then let's go back to our, our predictions. Okay, then. so, I, I, okay, so I, I'm predicting the Coalition to take this game 5-1. Run has, I think, not even won a single set they have ever. Um, so there's that. Whereas Coalition, even though they didn't win uh, against when they played against Team Efficiency, Team Efficiency is pretty good. And when I saw them play against Team Efficiency, I could see a lot of real depth in their play. Whereas for Run, I just haven't seen any at all yet. Not yet. But you know what? Let's take a look at Mines one more time. Um, so we could talk about the different types of things that these two teams may be capable of doing in this next game. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. We talked about this map a little bit earlier, but as usual, there are two capture points. The center of the map is a very highly contested high ground area, which is quite large. It's where the mine is, essentially. Then there's the beach and the this capture point on the water side, where you can see lightweight tanks like to roam and pressure the tanks that have taken the center, center part. So as you can see, the attacking spawn site spawns to the north, except when you spawn them incorrectly like last game by accident, <laughs> and then the defending side spawns to the south. You see tanks approach either the beach or the center of the map early on, take control. You see T-32s a lot of time on the defensive side, uh, but in the tank lineups we just saw for these two teams, we did not see T-32s, so um, definitely something. No, both ties actually had verts from what, what I remember here. And, um, as well as IS-3s. Mm -hmm. And IS-3s. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that they're going to rush this island in the middle here with where the mine is, especially with these tank lineups. Um, and the way that Run has been playing this map all throughout the tournament, that's kind of like their go-to place. They want that high ground to be able to have more visibility on both of the capture points. But um, yeah, we're going to have to see and uh, yeah, we'll see what they want to do with this. Sure. And um, the thing about the birds is when you run a bird on this map, it usually means that you're expecting some sort of passivity out of your opponent, right. so some sort of defensive location that you're going to want to try to break. And we see that actually on both sides, even the attacking side sometimes has to break these positions, the defense positions. Uh, but sometimes the attacking side gets to the, the position where they're about to capture or they are capturing from a very defensive mm -hmm. location. Then the defending side can use the bird to deter that, uh, that capture. So there's really a little bit of both. There's a good reason why both teams might run it. And that's why we're seeing it here. Sometimes we see one team skip it. Also, another thing we haven't really taken into account is BERT accuracy. Yes. Which we've seen players come out with SPGs on this map and totally whiff it. And we've seen players like Opelisk just never miss. So. He's, well, he's like, I don't I don't know. They're, he's like a god on the SP. He's like an SPG god. Yeah. So we're, he's like on a whole nother level there. But yeah, I am very curious to see how these two teams work on the BERT. Um, hmm. Well... We'll, yeah, I'm just super yeah, I mean, excited to see this game we, go We, we don't have a lot to go on just yet because these are two of our weaker teams. Um, the Coalition simply playing less games than the other team right now, so we have even less games to watch of theirs. Um, and so there's not a lot for us to say until we get into the game and start to see how well they're performing today. Especially because both of these teams had a bit of a break uh, for a while. They really did. But, okay, now all the sides are ready. The game is ready. We're going to go into set one. Okay, now we've got each side ready. Run is on the attack, Coalition on defense, and again, let's take a look at our tank list. Okay, let's just make sure you know, we didn't miss anything here. Two IS-3s, 1390, three lightweights, and a BERT, versus 
just simply put uh, an AMX 5100 instead of the 1390. Let's get this show on the road. Two auto loader tanks, one of which being more powerful, uh, but also a lot more vulnerable because of its lack of speed um, and its very long reload time. So. All right, just as the radio said, let's get this show on the road. And Coalition are going to storm up. And like I said, they, yeah, it looks like they're going to try and take this mine area, the little high ground as, uh, is it really high ground? Yeah, it is a bit high ground. I, I mean, well, once you get into this location, it's not, but once you get up to where that, uh, where Haku is going, it does, you do get up onto a high ground, especially facing down towards where, uh, Mafia is positioned right now. You're higher up. Okay. Um, it's not, it's not like, a, it's not like the castle on a Himmelsdorf, but I mean, you, you are on a higher location. Oof, yes. Now Blackhawk is already taking some shots. It looks like Run is going to take that uh, strategy where you bring your T-54s over to the beach and hide them out in good positioning. Though I think uh, Keith is a little out of position, but as of right now, um, he should be safe enough. Shots are being missed here. The Coalition is running around here, trying to chase down Blackhawk. I love that splash animation there. That was really, really cool. Uh, Blackhawk is going to be the first tank that is uh, focused down. Yep, a lot of damage going on these run tanks. The Coalition getting into a really good position here defensively as well, pushing these tanks uh, to kind of solidify their position because we saw all those lightweights rush the beach. All right, well, Kelvin is the first man down. It seems, and Alarex goes down for the Coalition. It is now a 6v6 game. Like the positioning here a lot for the Coalition. They've basically got these tanks surrounded and pinned down, where they're not going to be able to easily take that capture point. Right, and I like this. I like how Roby Wan Kenobi and Crazy are kind of together, and they're going to try to play it out so that they can each kind of take damage for one another. Um, but one, two, three, four, five, six. This guy, just from the side, trying to take out these lightweight tanks. Yep, he's got a long reload time. He See does. if he can get behind that rock. It actually looks like Kazib is going to take another shot. He, he takes out Lineage, but he might die for it. And the Scyther falls here now as well. So blows for blow on these two tanks. Yep. Or two teams, excuse me. And, and tanks for tanks as well. Um, tanks now, for tanks. We want to do five six. Wants to take another shot. Haku has found Blackhawk. You can see he's an auto leader that has a lot quicker Ooh, reload time. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and just uh, trade some fire there. But Cud is going to come up here knowing that Haku is uh, down in terms of his cooldown, his reload time. Yep, Raymond as well. Very, very long way to go. Um, down to nine seconds left, though. He's getting closer. That was can very baby good, get this though. shot? Or is Raymond going to get the ram? Raymond He's going for it. Go get the ram. And he gets it. He does. And now Run is down to two members left. One, two, three, four, five. And Keith are the last two men standing. And don't forget, Mafia is still alive and well. Keith does get two kills there. Ooh, pretty quick. he does. That was uh, pretty well done by him. Haku is down to 63 HP, but he's going to try to make his way around if Raymond can't get this. Oh, Raymond's a, uh, he's got full, full rounds, I didn't realize. Yep, Keith is in trouble. And now it's up to we one, two, three, four, five, six. And it doesn't look like he's gonna last very long, no, Susie. No, it does not. He's got another shot, but he misses it. And Raymond is coming ever so close with three rounds left. Also, Haku's got a nice shot on he we as well. He sure does. Well, that's one shot from Haku. Notice the patience here for the Coalition. They know they've got this game won. There's no reason to force the issue until they have a great shot. Mm -hmm. um, and they've also got, still, Mafia to be able to fire on that uh, SPG. And we'll see that actually fire just a second. It bounces Ooh, off. Oh, that does bounce off. Raymond takes a shot. Raymond takes a shot. Like, receives a shot. He, take, he, he accepts the shot. He accepted a shot. He has received it. And he will return it. Wow. I mean, Haku right now with such low HP, he's still doing quite the damage here. Yep. Where is Mafia? Why is he not participating? He's just not even Mafia attempting. Mafia's like right in the middle of the map, but he doesn't seem to be. Yeah, there he is in the middle of the map. Seems to be in an awkward position to he, take the shot. He is. Oh, but well, there we go. Haku, Haku hits it. finishes up. Wow. And that is the importance, guys, of keeping alive even if you have 63 hp if you're not dead you're an extra gun and we were able to see that in this game yeah well you know as they say uh it basically a tank is what holds all the parts together in a big gun 
Yeah. If, the, if the gun can still fire, it doesn't matter how broken everything else is, if the gun still fires, it can still do damage, and that's really, really important in a fight like this. If you had six tanks with one health left versus one IS-3, the tanks with one health left all together, even with six health together, and you'd see it on the top of the screen, it's like, well, it's 1350 to six. <laughs> doesn't matter, they would probably outmaneuver and burst down that uh that you know, is very, very true. All right, so um, both of them started out a little sloppy. There were a lot of shots fired, uh, not a lot of connections there, really. A but lot of haphazard movement out of the coalition. Like, they really rushed in without knowing what they were getting into. I feel like they just were kind of like, let's see what happens here, and they ran in and uh, obviously did take a lot of damage, but they, they got better trades in the end, and their positioning in the late game was better with Haku, for example, yes. just being a master. Absolutely. That was, he was definitely the clutch player in that set. And uh, we're going to see if they can do it again. Really don't think we're going to see any tank swaps here. I feel like this is this, the way these teams are approaching the map. We even had a regame, the tanks were swapped there. Mm -hmm. um, going into the second one, I really don't expect that uh, they'll want to swap the tanks just simply because this is what works for them. It was a close game. There was no glaring, like, oh, I wish that we didn't pick the 1390, and that's yeah, why we lost. No. Uh, in fact, the 1390 ended up being a really good pick for the map. Possibly, uh, you know, something I would recommend for them to do again. All right. Well, we're going to have to see if Run can finally get at least one win. Um, I, I am rooting for them. That would be nice. Would be nice. I mean, that was a very close game, one of the closest they've ever had. Uh, I can't think of a game where they were that close to winning a set ever. So, I mean, clearly they're improving because um, I, I think most people would prefer, I mean, not prefer, but. Uh, uh, favor the Singapore team coming into this match yes. specifically. So, um, again, we'll have to wait and see. Players are getting loaded up in the lobby and getting ready, set up, making sure that all those tanks are locked in. And I'm sure our refs are making sure there's no player changes, no tank swaps. But I feel like uh, we just go into game number two and see something pretty similar. I think so, too. I do like how runs started off the game where they took the T-54s, went all the way down to the beach side, you know, had good positioning. Obviously, they know what kind of strategy they want to execute. It's just when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, I feel like they kind of get a little bit flustered, and it takes them a little too long to make the right decisions to, uh, to you know, go forth with what, what they want to oh, do. Oh, sure, yeah. I mean... The, they, the, well, the game seems to be ready, Susie. We can talk a little bit about it in uh, Game 2. Sounds good. All right, let's get right into Game 2. Okay, set two. Coalition is up one game, and they are still on the defense. Uh, any changes in the tanks? Uh, taking a look here pretty quick. It doesn't look like it. Nope. All the tanks that are running are the same, as you would expect going into a game or two like this. So part of the problem for Run in the last game is they sent the majority of their, their light tanks to the beach, and they wanted to try to pick off some of the tanks from that location, try to assault perhaps the west position. But unfortunately, they ran into nothing because the coalition to this crazy haphazard <laughs> movement towards the top. So these two teams basically making very aggressive moves but Coalition got the better end of uh, positioning here. And again, now we're going to see Run. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh wow, way too happy after taking way too much damage. Coalition was kind of sitting there just kind of ready. They knew that Run was going to run by that little area. And yeah, Keith taking a ton of damage there, including the Scyther and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now the Coalition, knowing this, going to try to make their way up into the mine area. But now it's it's like right back at them, you know? like. Run well, knew that they were going to come up, and so they're just shooting at each other. I've never seen tanks run away from an AMX 5100 on the front lines like this before. <laughs> run really living up to their name now as they jump off the side. Um, this is not looking good. I mean, I have never... The, the, the attack there from the Coalition, they had the AMX 5100 run in at the front. It was like tr it was like trying to give them a present, but Run did not want it. They ran away. <laughs> they sure did run away, and now Lineage and Baby are going to... Sh Trade some fire. Krayzip's gonna come by, get caught in the crossfire. Lineage taking tons of damage. Man, who isn't taking damage here? <laughs> you know what? Well, I'll I tell guess you only the birds. Uh, right? I was gonna say, <laughs> Kelvin and Mafia are probably the only two are not taking damage. Lineage again going down, and he's probably gonna die because he's got three tanks in his face. And the 
How many tanks does it take to kill an IS-3? I don't even know. Uh, Larox gets a kill Literally, here. Literally, they're just trading shots one for one. Tanks are just falling left and right. Coalition, however, is getting the brunt of it. They are going to be down to two tanks very soon because Haku has just been eliminated. It is 4v2. And Mafia is basically not a tank. And Run might actually win this. It looks like it. It could be the first time, no Susie. No way. Wait, don't count Don't count your ducks before they're in a row or whatever that the, phrase is. Or, or eggs before yeah. hatched or whatever. Yeah, well, well let's just, uh, right. let's just like, let's see if Larax can do it. is going to kill Larax here because, well, his reload is up now. And he's going to be focused. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, he's still alive. Larex seven health. Seven, seven health. health. Don't drive into him too hard. No, he's going to use the shell as Ooh, his nope. friend, but Cud does take him out. Now it's only up to Mafia. Hey, it could happen. <laughs> I don't think so, no, because Blackhawk is right behind him. Run! Run, they win their win first the game. game! They did it. Very <laughs> well played. I'm so happy for you guys. These Woo. games are out of control. Like, what is happening? I don't know. Okay, so... Like normally, let's talk about this from like a fan's perspective, right? This is the, mine's is the map where like the 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 hardcore fans with like the monocle are sipping tea. They like stayed up all night because they're like, oh yes, let's see what's going on in mines and the Asia My scene. And they, they take the sip of the tea yeah. and readjust their <laughs> monocle and they're like, oh yes, so that is how Elon Gaming likes to play on this map and it is very technical. Well, these guys are like, no, nah, we're not doing that. Mines are all the strategy, all the technical they're like, positioning. No, I'm drinking Mountain Dew, man. And he's like running it. Well, these guys, these guys are these teams are like. They're going hard. They're just running into each other. Yeah. They're like, mines, I heard there's like a strategy where you get the birds. We gotta get one of those. Let's all just go fight <laughs> each other and the birds can shoot from a distance where it's safe. Very aggressive play, throwing strategy out of the window. I mean, clearly there is a plan and they have a strategy, but it's, it's like, let's get there first and let's fight them. Where instead of like, how we see like Elon getting very perfectly positioned their tanks very slowly. <laughs> Make sure they've got somebody to spot for that movement on the beach. Reposition if necessary. Try to slowly send those IS-3s to the capture point. These guys are just going for a big out brawl. They really were going for And I think that was the strategy was... Uh, I think both of them went in with that idea. Obviously, the coalition being there and catching them off, they knew that run was going to go that yeah. way. Just started shooting haphazardly at them. Co took down a ton of HP. Then Run decided to do the opposite, was like, well, we'll just follow you in, take down your HP, and it's like, oh, well, fine, you know, and they just kind of, like you said, a big brawl, it was like a big bar fight right there in the middle, but well, with guns. There's just not much me for me to analyze here, I mean, just focus on Susie's play-by-play, -play. she's breaking it down for you guys, because we're seeing <laughs> one tank die, another tank die, another tank die, I'm another really tank die. I'm really trying, damage. but they keep dying so fast, it's really hard for me to be able to call them all out. I'm gonna I'm gonna be like focusing really hard on exactly which tanks get focused down first by these two teams, because clearly there's a lot of focus fire happening. Um, the rotations Is there, we're seeing, though? Well, okay, the rotations we're seeing are very weak. No IS-3s are protecting anybody. And also, you never want to lead a charge with your AMX-5100 <laughs> in the front. Don't do that, Coalition. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe they'll learn from this mistake. Next game that we go into is uh, they swap sides, first off. So maybe run on the defense or play a little more defensively. I don't think so. <laughs> they're going to spawn on the other side of the map. They're like, oh, so we spawn over here now. Okay. Oh, that's not that bad. <laughs> no, Come I'm teasing. On. I'm teasing. I'm, I'm actually making this exaggerated just simply because we've never quite seen this map played this way. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to make it into somewhat of a joke because simply it, it doesn't seem like there is a plan except let's go fight them. Uh, we're not seeing the slow calculated movements, the very careful checking and scouting towards the, the beach point with the tanks moving towards the, the lightweights moving towards that location, trying to sweep around the other side with the T-32 on the high ground over there, right above that rock where he's very safe. Right. We're just simply not seeing that. Like, just forget everything you thought about this map. To be honest, I think this is a lot more fun. I kind of like it. I definitely like this better. Um, and yeah, so now we're going to have TCSG on the attack. Though they were kind of still attacking last time around too. Maybe they'll just swap sides and attack each other. I don't know. I mean, this is a map that not only is it that strategy that we always talk about that's very um, calm and collected, but this is a, a map that's very versatile. So we're going to have to see what's going on in set number three. Set three, the score is tied 1-1. One, one. Let's see what the tanks are this time. 
Let's take a look. Okay, T32 for run. That's a good sign of strategic depth here. One IS-3 and four lightweight uh, T-54s. On the side of the Coalition, they're running two IS-3s and four lightweight tanks, one of them being the RU-251, and they're bringing the BERT. So, Run decided to leave out the SPG and run with the T-37 instead, which is, uh, which is interesting. They're running right up the middle, uh, Run is, but their IS-3s are lagging a bit behind. They're gonna need to get into good position here. Again, with the crossfire, we could already, I'm like soup. I'm like on the edge of my seat right now, like who's gonna take the first shot? But Baby on the IS-3, it looks like it's a little quieter this time around than it was before. We see that Crazy takes a little bit of damage. Um, again, the Coalition on the attacking side, the T-54 beach party is happening down south. Yep. And uh, yeah, this is this seems a little more strategic like what we've seen before. Blackhawk is taking ton of damage already. Yeah, from uh, Mafia. Mafia is pretty good on that bird, I'll have to be honest. Um, he's been the one who's impressing me the most out of all 14 players we're seeing today. Ruby and Kenobi in a good spot, and uh, we do see that three T54 push, which is which is standard and normal. Um, right, I teased a lot earlier, and I joked a lot about these teams having no plan, but clearly they do. It's just that Ron is trying to mess up the plan. <laughs> <laughs> All Sometimes right. uh, self self uh, messing up the plan well, as well. Well, this is this is great. We see from the mines they are going to try to shoot over to the uh, the beach party with a T-54 lightweight beach party. And now, wow, Run is going to run out of the mines and try to just head on, butt them again. Yep, yeah, well, they're attacking this position where they're basically trying to block the capture here. The problem is, with the positions, the positions of the coalition, I feel, are just way too good. They're gonna run into basically a trap. The Burt is out, you know, the Burt is missing from this fight, which right. is one thing that they, they can kind of try to rely on here. Ooh, Lyrex is going to get focused, fired by all these members of Run right now. He is taking quite some damage and is down to zero HP. Baby is now the target of all of these tanks. He's trying to run away, but I don't think he's going to be able to, especially with Run being on the high ground here. Yep, there goes Baby. Yep, and four members of Run still intact up in that little area. Well, I mean, this is a, just to simply put a, a lack of rotation for a coalition, considering that their tanks that were exposed were being focused on one by one, and they still were never able to get into better Yes, and now Haku is going to be the next target. This is really well done by Run. They are just going to try to take down tanks one by one. The entire team running together. They're going to the beach party. Let's break up this party, man. Krazib going to take tons of damage. Ooh, bad movements there on Krazib as well. He was not able to allow Raymond no, to help him there. he was not. And now Raymond's like, shoot, I got to back away. Scyther may take a little bit of damage. He does go down, and it's Cud versus Raymond here. It is 2v2. Ooh, dodging that T32 shot there is really important and Roby one Kenobi needs to get over here actually they need his help oh this is so good cut is just pushing out Raymond so that Blackhawk can take a shot at him that yeah. is so brilliant okay here comes Roby one Kenobi the fastest tank in the West I'm gonna come over here oh but misses his shot fastest in point blank tank range in Germany yep that's right and uh might even be a West German tank I don't know but uh, can he get him? Oh, he does, but he gets he taken does, out. But he dies as well, and Run takes a second game. Wow, that was uh, pretty fiery, as usual. That was. That was a little more organized, for sure. At least at the start. No, even even towards the middle. I like the fact that Run decided to run that composition where all four of the tanks just kind of went around. They knew that Coalition was going to be towards the southern part of the map, and they just one by one started taking everyone out. I feel like Coalition should have been able to read that. Once the second tank goes down, should have been like, Time crap, to rotate out of here. They should and, leave. Yeah, they, they need to leave. They need to position their tanks to surround and collapse on that group of tanks. If from far away, everyone could just say, oh, Say so you're this place and we're over here, why don't we just point our guns at where they are and surround <laughs> them and, and destroy them because they don't have room to work with, they don't have room to, to move. Yep. And instead of doing that, they just kind of got themselves picked off. They just all kind of slowly backed away separately. It's like there was a lack of communication. They're like, whoa, wait, what do we do? Oh gosh, it's like things aren't going the way we want. And they you got, can see that they weren't able to really communicate each other yeah, what they the got, next step is going to be. They got flustered, maybe they... 
it just it seemed like it, if someone said, "Oh, uh, their Skype wasn't working for that game," I'd be like, "Oh, I get it," you know, or something <laughs> like that. But like they just did not move together to finish off those tanks that moving in group. So good coordination by Run for um, sure. And no, that was very very well. That's done. important. That's very important. And uh, even at the end there, Coalition was almost able to turn it around, but Run takes their second win. And uh, they win the next one. They take this map with a 3-1 wow. score before we go into uh, Runeberg. Well, this momentum must be really nice, you know. Like, they haven't been able to... Every time they played, they would always be on the losing end. I mean, this must feel like a million bucks to just win two in a row. Yeah, absolutely, Susie. Um, so, now we're going into the fourth and final set on this map. And uh, it's going to be a uh, coalition attacking again. And... I just feel like we're going to see a plan, and then at some point, things are going to go awry, but we'll see who ends up winning in the crossfire. In that crossfire, they'll run better coordination, better focusing. That was very, It very was well. really risky, and against a team like Elong, that would probably never work, but Coalition just couldn't handle it. They just simply couldn't. So and it was a good plan for the situation. It was, and Run knew their opponent and was able to play on that. They just figured that Coalition was not going to be able to rotate um, as efficiently as they were coming towards them. So... We're going to have to see how they do in this next game. This is the last game on this map. Yeah, last game on this map for the night, because even tiebreaker map is going to be Lakeville. So kiss minds goodbye after this game. It's Yay. all going to be over. And then it's Runeberg for game five, but we're not there yet. So got to have to see what they're going to, what they got planned. And we go right into game number four. Set four, ladies and gentlemen, run up two to Coalition's one. Run is now on the defense again this time around. Let's take a look at our, our tanks. Well, run this time is pulling six lightweights, including the T-37 and an IS-3. And we're seeing a more balanced tank lineup for the Coalition, who's put the BERT away. And we'll be rolling two IS-3s and four lightweights, including that RU-251 and their own little fifth lightweight on the tier 6 T37. So uh, this is going to be, again, another opportunity for Coalition to use that beach push. They're actually moving all together this time, not even yeah. splitting anybody off. Uh, everyone is kind of going together towards that bottom. Wow, Kelvin is taking tons of damage. It's almost as if they're forming a coalition. Whoa, it's like that, and Run is just going to run awry. Uh oh, Kelvin, Kelvin is goes down. Down. Wow, that was a quick, quick uh, kill there. Is it just me, Susie? Are we starting to see Coalition do basically what Run did last game? <laughs> <laughs> They're trying. I mean, I think they like that strategy. Obviously, it worked on them. Blackhawk now is going to take a ton of damage as well. Ooh. And Coalition, learning from their mistakes. Um, Both Kudo and we want to do five, six missed both of their shots. And and now we one two three four five six is going to accept a bunch of shots. And those were not those are not little shots, man. No, now baby is going to go down. It looks like, but uh, actually not even necessarily. Keith is reloading, and he could actually be saved here. Lineage is coming to support. This is ending up to be a much better fight for the coalition in yes, this game. Yes, it absolutely is. Keith is now surrounded by members of coalition. Keith goes down, Cud goes down, and Lineage. Lineage is the last man left. Wow, Coalition totally took Run's strategy last time and gave him a taste of their own medicine. Not with all seven tanks from the start, but brought four and just went and focused down tanks one by one. And again, we saw Run unable to respond, unable to deal with this. And that led to their demise. I mean, this, this game is like very simple. It's like, just take the map away. <laughs> the map is no longer about what you think it is. It's about positioning of tanks and fighting. Like, you could randomize a terrain for a map, put these guys on it, and if you're going to fight like this, it really doesn't matter about where the capture points are or where um, the, the high grounds are. It's more about just where your opponent's hiding. Let's find them and kill them and focus them down. So... Props to, props to Coalition there for taking something that worked against them. Yep, and they totally adapted well, and it was a quick fourth round. But that now brings our score to 2v2, and we're going to go on to Runeberg next. Let's take a look at the map. 
So this is Runeberg. This is the last map of the evening. I mean, if we don't have a tiebreaker, that sure, is. Sure, sure, which it looks like we could, I mean, considering the scores are going 2-2. Two, two. Um, Ruinberg is one of those maps that is uh, mostly a city map, but there's a lot of open space to it. It's not Himmelsdorf by any means. It's a map where there's a lot of space to work with. It's almost half city, half outside of the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's that fountain. It's a nice we'll mix, which means we'll probably get a nice mix of tanks as well. We may just go ahead and get some heavy tanks and lightweights. Um, so on this map, on the aerial view, you guys can see that the city is, the bigger city is over by the attacking spawn point. But what you don't see is the, um, the capture point to the right, there's a little town there. Yeah. With a bunch of little houses, and that's, an, that's often a good spot for players to hide and try to collect fire. Sure, so the defending side has to figure out how the attackers are going to leave the city. If you move up to the north, especially if you go straight from the very far west and move onto that road that's all the way at the north, you're going to be exposed to a lot of fire from the defenders. But if you move directly diagonally to the capture point, going in a northeast type direction from the A, then you can go there uh, and get to the capture point that way. We never want to go down these big streets that have you know a narrow choke point because you can't fan your tanks out and enemy tanks can spot you early on, scout you out, and then just simply uh, focus you down from afar away. Right, and, well uh, anytime, I mean, just think of it very... Basically, anytime you're on a big road, it makes, keeps you pretty open and people can spot you and shoot you down, especially these roads where, you know, around any corner or any turn, there could be a tank, you know, staring at you straight in the face. Yeah. So it's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, we don't know the styles of these two teams just on this map because we haven't seen them here yet. Yes. And, uh, and they seem to kind of just break the rules of whatever map they run into. <laughs> so I would love to see big brawls in the city. What would be the sickest thing ever is both teams run six AMX 5100s and just, and just go into the city. <laughs> no, you know what would really, you know what would happen is there are six AMX 5100s, right? They shoot everything. Everyone's on cooldown. The one tier six is like running around trying to yes, pick them off. Yes, pick them off because, and then all the AMX 51 are just like, oh, we can't do anything. So they're like ramming at each other instead. Sure. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> We're we, like totally theory crafting right now. We can now. dream, right? Um, what's probably going to happen is two AMX 5100s per team, the rest IS 3s. Um, Possibly uh, a tank destroyer, maybe. Maybe. Um, and, and a couple lightweights. A couple lightweights. I can see that. I might see. Um, AMX 1390 as well, mm. mixed in there, um, right. just because auto loader is really strong on this map. Especially, yeah, with the buildings and all, like you said, uh, where you can hide and shoot and hide and kind of do one of these things. Yeah, this is well, definitely well good, illustrated there. <laughs> one of these things. <laughs> <laughs> these are tanks, guys. Um, I'm just looking at you on, the, on our free monitor, you look more like a cat that's like trying to, <laughs> uh, you know, grab onto something. But uh, as soon as these players are ready, we're going to go into this one, obviously, you know, we have to do tank picks and whatnot. The attacking yep. side is going to be coalition. Yes, it is, which means uh, run is on the defense, but we'll see how defensive they play. They seem to really just like to get out in there. So Focus fire seems to be very important for these two teams, uh, as well as just in, in general uh, very aggressive movements, sometimes disregard for where their opponent's team might be. Well... That's what makes it fun, and I've been really enjoying these last four games. So if the next four games are just as exciting, then I am A-OK -okay with that. Well, it looks like we're going to be starting in a moment. Maybe. Maybe switching some players. Run. Oh, Run is actually rebooting their computers now. So we're going to have to wait for Run to do that. Yeah. Um, oh, no, they, they already reboot. I think game is ready, guys. Oh, I hope so. I think so. All right. Hopefully, Run doesn't have any trouble. And we're going to go into game number five. The score is now two versus two. We have Run on the defense first in set five. And our tank list looks like this. All right, let's go through this pretty quick here. AMX 5100, two IS-3s, three lightweights, a lot of lightweights actually, they're rolling, and uh, a BERT, so that's run. Three IS-3s, uh, three lightweights, one of this being the uh, RU, and then two T-54s. Of course, the T-37 also a lightweight, uh, but it's not a tier eight. That's gonna be how they bring this up, uh, line up their seventh tank. So, moving through the city already, moving actually to, very quickly, to the uh, southeast, 
in which they're, they're going to approach the, that. Oh, Mafia, yeah. got to be careful. Mafia going is going to go straight down the center here to see what, the, you know, just try to get some kind of information He's for his scout. team. Yeah. He's totally scouting. There is an IS-3 headed straight for him right now, though, while the rest of the coalition are going to take the southern eastern, uh, the southeastern portion of the map. Yep, we've got to be careful about going down this road, though, like we said. It's not really a road, it's more of a path, I guess. It's maybe a little a pathway, sidewalk. yeah. Um, run, however, they're going to take, they're just going to camp out over in the little village here on the east side of the map. As you can see, there's we one, two, three, four, five, six, and Lineage also hiding and takes a shot at Baby. Baby gets shot, doesn't even move, doesn't even care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's going to take another one. He misses, Lynch gets another uh, shot on he, him. Yep, and he takes some damage. Baby is now down to half HP. and He's getting see, shot by the, yeah, the bird Yeah, Kelvin is, is trying to take some shots over at him as well. Okay. Larax and Krazeeb. Larax and Krazeeb. I think they are trying to see, again, I think the, the, the pick, the focus fire and pick and run kind of Strategy is what they like here. Yeah. Uh, Crazy Abe and Lyrics making a lot of noise behind this house, trying to lure out members of Run to come over there while Haku is going to hide in a nearby alleyway, a nearby uh, courtyard. I well, he's, he just went through like two different houses. He's like in this alley here, if, if you can call it that, behind these bushes. Um, he's in a very dangerous spot because as long as he hides behind these bushes and these buildings and escape through here so it's if he goes further out yeah it's a dangerous position but where he is now is not that scary um right now mafia is in a very scary spot because he's so close to that is3 Ooh, kelvin is doing some damage lyrics takes a hit for 11 and this is probably the slowest game we've watched run and coalition play yep um so far at this point, we are seeing Coalition move closer and closer towards being able to threaten that capture point. Uh, just simply because they have such a good position, they could send Mafia to the capture point with an IS-3 buddy and control this this path, um, the Cobblestone Road. The Cobblestone Road. It's Cobblestone. Road. Um, and uh, yep. Baby is in a very risky spot. Lineage might actually finally finish him off. He should be able to. I think he just missed. Oh, goodness. And actually took a shot from Baby at the same time. All right, that AMX 5100 is now moving into position. And... All right, Lineage goes ahead and takes quite some damage. This is their baby and Lineage are just going back and forth, trading shots. I mean, I feel like at any of this point, if they just called in one of their friends for backup, they could finish him, finish him off. But all oh, right, Cut here we and go. Raymond, they're just going to try to duke it out here in the middle of the courtyard Raymond and goes down. like I said when you call over your friend to help out that usually works out better Roby one Kenobi also is going to take a focus fire down from four different three different tanks sorry and uh, I think it's going to be Krasip's time next well he needs to take out that AMX 5100 if he can meanwhile Larix is going to try to get we one two three four five six uh, but we is going to get the next shot Scyther no, goes Scyther. for it he's going for it and Larex is taking a lot of damage here gets a kill I think the Burt got him there but Haku does kill Black Hawk, Black Hawk and these are just trades for trades but Run has done enough they've essentially won the game without any big mistakes here yeah. they should be able to corner and finish these players off they're also the defenders so for 2 minutes and 45 seconds Coalition has to find something to do I don't think they're going to be able to do it outmaneuvered here and Mafia the last man standing on the T-37 trying to get a kill here on Cud, but he fails and Run will take their third win here, getting closer and closer to that 5-3 victory they're hoping for here, excuse me, 5-2. Wow, this is uh, this is definitely interesting. That was um, that was a slower game, and I liked how they finally did utilize the map to their advantage. You know, they used the buildings to really work out how they're going to position themselves, and uh, yeah, that was very well done. Yeah, I uh, I mean, basically what we're seeing from these two teams is not the depth of strategy that we've seen from the other teams. Where, like, on the other teams, you could, I could, if you tell me, okay, Karen Tigers versus Elong, they're spawning here, they're spawning here, what are they going to do? I could tell you exactly, probably, how they're going to move and exactly what tanks to use. These two teams have freestyle. You know, I feel like that's the best way to describe it. Here are our tanks, we have a general idea. 
once the game starts, we're freestyling it. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, they're doing quite well. That it's it kind of becomes a crazy game because the two teams, as they freestyle against each other, are basically going to, uh, you know, since both teams are freestyling, it looks less standard. It's a little bit tougher to follow. Right, if you're a World of Tanks fan who's been watching, you know the Asia scene for a while. These two teams kind of do their own thing. I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with that. For sure, this is their way of fighting strategy that works for them. This I thought is you were going to say finding themselves. <laughs> <It's their laughs> way of finding this themselves. is the way they find themselves, guys. No, this is the way they find the strategies that works for their team and their team compositions. They want to make sure that um, things that they've practiced, and I'm sure that the positioning on Ruinberg has definitely been practiced because right when the game started, you saw them like yeah. fan out and go to those specific places. They have a plan. Yes. They've got a strategy. Um, and then they like to freestyle. And what's cool about this to me is they're, the way they freestyle would mean that once they, if they get better as they improve, they'll have that knowledge of how to transition and oh, how absolutely. to freestyle so down that by the time they become better teams, they'll be like, oh, we know exactly how we can figure this one out. Like, and no one else can fight this weird situation, so we'll create it and then we'll beat you because, you know, we know how to fight this. I think so, too. I mean, it's an incredible skill to have, to be able to improv your way through, yeah. right? And um, these teams are doing a great job of it. Game is now ready. We're going to go ahead into game number six. Set number six is underway. We have run on the defense, and they are up three to two for the coalition. Let's look at these tanks. Looking at these tanks, looks to be one RU 251 got replaced by an IS-3 for coalition. Otherwise, tanks seem to be exactly the same as before. So we're running four IS-3s this time, giving them a little bit of a tougher lineup. Yeah. Slower, bulkier, heavier. It's like the exact opposite of the RU <laughs> is the IS-3. But uh, I think this is good for them because especially in a, um, you know, like a, a city setup as they have here, it's better for them to have that armor while doing the damage. They're just going to rush this top point and actually since Run moves together, uh, they're out of position to defend it. They do have Kelvin to slowly, uh, you know, fire over and deny this capture. But they're going to get into a really nice position, actually, where they can start to defend this. This is, a, this is a really good spot for Coalition. I like this a lot. Coalition bringing those IS-3s into that capture point. Base capture is already down to 30 seconds. And they're going to try to lure out Run uh, for sure. But Lineage already taking tons of damage. I think he's going to get Focus Fire down right here. Yep, and he goes down by Haku. Yep, so Coalition already in an even better spot here. <laughs> All of the shots miss. Oh, the bird. Oh, man. two oh, more misses. But well. OB1 does take some damage, and that's going to hurt that base capture time. Oh, and there's a shot on Lyrics as well, which will further hurt the time. And one more shot there on Kuzib will reset it completely. The Coalition had a good plan here, but I feel like it might be time to adjust they the plan a little bit. They need to hide a little bit. Like, where Lyrics is is pretty good. Behind that building over to yeah. the right side is usually where the tanks go and hide. Yeah. But they're way too open right now. And uh, members of Run are able to take these easy shots on them. All right, well, there goes, well, uh, there goes Kelvin. Kelvin. That's going to make this a little bit easier. It looks like now, because Kelvin is down, Run is moving more aggressively towards this capture point. Try to deny it. Raymond taking a bit more hits. Okay, Keith is getting focus fired down. Raymond trying to take those last hits before he runs away. He knows he's going to be the center of this fire as well. Scyther taking 427 damage. 20 seconds to go on this capture. But as long as you're alive and as long as you've got a gun, you are still in the game as we know. And there's 15 seconds left now. Lyric oh, finally that miss. That in miss. a good Oh my gosh, he's in a perfect position and using the shell of his friend to block it out. Base capture in They missed five again! Seconds. They can't miss. Okay, they can't miss anymore. <laughs> All right, crazy. Get out of there. You're ruining things. Well, run. Starting to make this look like it's doable, this defense. 
Wow, look at that. Hiding. They really do want to try to make this work. Raymond gets taken out by Blackhawk. Base capture is now down to 16. Oh, make that 93. Make that 93. All right, Keith, Keith is down, now though. down two. Oh, but Cud could actually get a kill here. Uh, we lost the camera on him. I want to see if he's going to get that. Oh, okay. Well, Haku is dead. Blackhawk with his... 5100 taking shots. He's got only one more left. Make that zero. He's got a 43 second downtime. Baby is, uh, yeah, at 60 HP. Well, not going to survive that. This is looking pretty rough. Blackhawk with a long reload time. So it is essentially 2v2 temporarily here, but if they can protect him for 26 more seconds, he will actually have his uh, rounds back up and Where Lyrox is going the wrong way. Where is during all of this though? Lyrox is the last man standing. He has no one to help him out. Mafia is just hiding out. He's back trying to shoot through is that he window. stuck? No, I think he's trying to shoot through that window, but it doesn't go anywhere, does it? Or maybe it does. I can't really quite tell, but... I'm actually scared that Mafia he may might have, have lost been his lost, lost connection. Oh, could be. He could have also lost his treads, potentially. And he can't move. Like, physically his treads are broken oh, on his tank. Oh, gosh, yeah. So right, okay. But, oh, now no, he's no, now he's moving, so... Maybe he's been lagging, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think you can shoot through that window, but it looks like he might have had an angle. I don't know, man. All right, well, uh, those rounds are up while he was so, waiting, doing yeah. whatever he was doing. He gets one kill here, but he gets taken out and run. Going to take that 4-2 lead, one game away from taking their very first game to tie with uh, Coalition in points. That game went so wrong when they... There's a term for this in esports. It actually comes from a poker term. It's called to all in. When you decide that you're going to go for a strategy that if it works, you win the game. If it if starts it to fail, you lose. They decided they were going to hide behind that tank husk, hide in those bushes, and try to capture that with three tanks. They were very close. I think it, the lowest I went was like seven, six seconds. No, like it did get to like three seconds from what I, I, what I think I saw. But And Run missed a lot of shots. They did. If, and they, so if they missed one more time, then they win the game. So it's like it's, it's basically I feel like you could describe this as an all-in. We're going to stay here for three seconds, and if, if we get it, sick, we win the game. Yes. But they didn't get it. So obviously they took a ton of damage for no reason because they weren't capping anymore and ended up losing it. So. Ooh. Well, all right. So, ooh, I'm, I'm like, what, what just happened, man? What just happened? Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it was a fiery game. It was a cool idea. It was like I was on the edge of my seat all the, during that base capture, but, um, like, we need to bring some more standardized type play to the to the board here for Ron. A little more this, patience. I think that's, coalition, yeah. yeah, a little more patience and a little better focus fire, like just to connect their shots a yeah, little they, bit better. Yeah, their accuracy was a bit off. Yeah. I mean, they missed, I mean, we saw like shots go over the shoulders <laughs> of those tanks several times, like three in a row. I'm like, are they just going to lose? That <laughs> you know? would be disastrous. All right, so game seven then. Now we have Run on, on the attack, excuse me. Yep, and... Uh, you know, it's still a game that if Run loses this one, they could still win the three points. But uh, very stressful. They lose it twice more. We're going to a tiebreaker. So this is uh, pretty stressful. Obviously, they want to get the points they can. Yeah. If Run wins by tiebreaker, they'll actually be behind Coalition, despite oh, the fact that man, they won that. They'll be, right. they'll be even two they'll be like points two behind. two points yeah. behind Coalition. Despite no. the fact that Coalition has not gotten an official win yet. Run needs this next win. They really, really do. And I think that would boost team morale and it'll make them feel a lot better. Uh, and they're still in the running then, you know. They will be on the ranking boards. And like you said, they can say, ha, huh, we beat Coalition. You guys got your three points for free. Yeah. We actually earned it, you know. So that is going to be definitely something they're going, they have to work towards. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are swapping sides now. Uh, and now we're going into... Coalition on the defense, right. run on the attack. Run on so, the attack. Uh, it could just simply be that on this map, these two teams are defense oriented. So, like, we could maybe see at this point, the Coalition is like, oh, now we got defense. Thank God. Like, let's let's take this and, and run with it and win with it. Um, again, these two teams to the start play very standard yes. um, and then play a little bit differently. You know, we don't see all ins like that happen very often. But that was really cool. I like the idea. I mean, it almost worked. So, I mean, I, I don't have anything bad, bad to say about it. It just didn't work out. Yeah. Um, but now we get to see whether Run is going to take the same approach or, or if they're going to um, have a little bit more of a safe attack, if you will. Well, considering that this map is more of a half-and-half half map, do you, re do you think they'll change up their tanks all that much? Not really. Uh, just only because even though this map is half-and-half, half, like, the one thing we might see changed is the SPG because that okay. is something that 
is even just strange for either team to have. We have seen it sometimes on this map. I think maybe this is the third time we've ever seen mm -hmm. on this map. Um, we'll have to see stylistically if uh, if Run wants to use, or rather if uh, the Coalition wants to use that on the defense or not. Um, and we'll see if that gets switched off. That's one thing we might see change. Otherwise, an IS-3 might be switched here and there. We already saw the RU got switched from like round one to round two. Yeah. So it's really stylistically what's up to these two teams. I don't feel like attack defense-wise, we could say, oh, I think this team likes to do this. Like right. when you look at Elong or Karen or B Gaming or or even Horseman, you go, oh, okay, I know what they're gonna do because they always play like this. We've seen so many games from them, and they they've shown us so many amazing games, and the strategy is clear and crisp. Um, these two teams seem like they're still kind of figuring things out to a certain extent. So uh, there's no way we can really predict the li tank lineups. I think the safest prediction here is that they're gonna be really similar. I think so too. I it was actually a loaded question. I actually think it's going to be pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's a half and half. And uh, their play styles, attack and defense, have both been pretty similar. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're very aggressive. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to see if that is true or not. Let's get right into game number seven. Okay, set number seven. Run is up four games, one more, and they actually get to win the series. Let's look at the tanks. So, looks like we're going to see a mirrored tank lineup here. Oh, yeah. For both teams, we will see an AMX 5100, IS-3s, two of them, and four lightweights, three of those, of course, being the T-54s, and the final tank being the T-37 Tier 6 tank. So, um... Mirrored lineups, no, no more SPGs, no RU-251. Nope, this is pretty standard. And what a way to, for this to maybe end. This could be our last game of the night, and if these two go into just a head-to-head -head fight with the same lineups, it'd be kind of cool with it. That is pretty neat. All right, Coalition sends one of their IS-3s up north to try to see what is up there. Roby One Kenobi is going to venture forth by himself and probably get spotted. Yep, there he is. He's already been spotted by three members of Run, but Roby One is going to try to lure them so that the rest of the members can shoot them down. Yeah, I think this is a trap. You know, base capture started already temporarily here. <laughs> I run. I don't think this is going to last. I don't I think, think that's just, going just to last either. Yeah. And Roby One, yeah, he's uh, he's got that heavy armor. That IS-3 can take some of this damage, and he's going to stand there. Cut inside there. The two lightweights obviously can outmaneuver him, but uh, as of right now, nobody's connecting. Yep. All right, Kelvin taking some damage. Yeah, he's way out of position. Ooh, that was not a good goodbye. place to be. Goodbye. Yep. There was three members on him. He just kind of got stuck there. You know, uh, I really feel that that was a great move to send Haku alone. He hasn't even taken any damage, and uh, I've seen not Haku, or Robo and Kenobi. Wow. Um, he's taken no damage, and All he right. drew them way out of position. Run is in that position now that where they can base capture and hide behind the building. This is where they should have been in the last game, and they're going to try to do this base capture in 29 seconds. Well, they Maybe just get the kill too. goes down, yeah. Scyther, I think, is going to go down here unless he can dodge this shot. Oh, that not. was wonderful. Roby One um, takes a take a shot, but it just kind of ricochets off. A Blackhawk is going to go down here for basically no reason. Uh, I'm not even sure why he's trying to go this way. I don't either. He had 18 seconds before he had any type of ammunition, and uh, he was a sitting duck there. Run, uh, no longer base capturing, um, but trying it is to transition, a you know? four v. Five. Yeah, and I think Kudo, aka Cut Zero, <laughs> is going to go down here. Yeah, there he, he goes. Is. Now He's Keith. Focused, Keith is going to be able to take a shot on Lyrax, I believe. He misses. But, ooh, he misses. And. Lineage comes to finish him off. Because Eve is now a bit vulnerable as well. Can he survive? I don't think so, but will he know. take Keith with him? Keith is at least retreating in the right direction. Yep. Keith oh, he does not dodge. To... And Lineage wants to finish this off. He's taking a shot. <clears throat> okay, hits we one, two, three, five, six, one more time. This is looking pretty hopeless for Run in game seven. Well, yep. Wow, Lineage wow. couldn't even do it. Lineage, you're the last like man standing. He's able to do that, but I mean, what what's he gonna do against three more tanks plus a 5100 that is 
That has full rounds. Plus, he's surrounded and has literally nowhere to run. <laughs> uh, no pun intended, but I mean, he cannot escape. That was totally pun intended. It was not. It wasn't, I swear. He's done. He's dead. Uh, we're just going to watch one, this happen, Susie. We're just going to watch this we're murder happen. We're bystanders. Whoa, goodbye, and We Lee. watched that. That was on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and the Coalition go ahead and take Game 7. This is a lot closer than I thought was going to happen in this yeah. series. Uh, it looks like we might even go to... A tiebreaker. Yep, entirely possible. But then we get to see Lakeville, so I'm okay. <laughs> that would be awesome. That game was just simply... Similar situation that we saw in the previous game on that map where you try to all in the capture point and it doesn't work. I think it's a bad, bad move. I think Run also felt very hasty because they knew they just needed that one win to finish off the series. I'm sure they're tired too. It's, uh, I'm going to check the clock now. It is 1 a.m. here in Korea. Uh, I'm sure it's like midnight for the, the players. Yeah. And I mean, it just seemed like they hastily wanted to just win and finish, but in that flustered moment, they um, they just weren't able to right. Well, like I it. said earlier, uh, if they don't win here, they still have the chance to get three points. Um, if they don't win the next one, though, uh, then yeah, the most they get is two. two, two. So. Mm, a bit worrisome. I, uh, I think the capture strategy we're seeing these teams do is pretty bad. I, like, it's just, it's obvious. It's blatant, it's easy to block, you're insanely vulnerable. That's why we don't see teams do this strategy, because when you, when you do this strategy, when you do that positioning that you're talking about, because the positioning you're talking about, we have seen in pro games, yes. we, we do say a lot, but it's when you control where people are so they can't just shoot you anyways. Of course. So if you just take it and wait there without controlling anything, well, with your tanks poorly positioned, the other team gets wind of it, they're just gonna shoot you, and eventually whittle your hit points down and, and stop the cap. And then you die, right. And so, uh, okay, so game number eight, we have Our final uh, game on this map. Yeah, we do. We have run on the attack once more. Whether they're going to play it a little more patiently or try the same strategy again where they run into capture, I don't know, man. Yeah, this series has been pretty pretty aggressive, pretty pretty out of control. Like I can't even predict what I think is gonna happen. Well, actually, if I had to predict, like if you if you had a gun to my head and you were like, Wolf, what do you think is gonna happen? Tell me exactly. Tell me exactly I'll what's gonna happen. I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Um <laughs> They're going to try to cap again, and it's going to fail. We're going to a tiebreaker. So that's what's going to happen. Susie, I've already seen the future. Oh, boy. All right. Well, TCSG is rebooting now, and so we're going to wait for them to, uh, yeah. Get back in, get ready. Get back get in, sorted. get good connections, and uh, make sure everything is peachy keen yeah. for this uh, set eight. Because if they lose this, it's all over, right? So pretty important to be in, uh, in tip-top shape. Uh, you know, maybe they're uh, rebooting, and while they're rebooting, they're talking some extra strats. Yeah, I think that's probably what's what's it's going. Possible. Like, guys, we need to reboot. Wink, wink, wink. <laughs> we need to talk about this. You know. Uh, you know, I mean, these things happen in online terms, of course. Um, this is a very different sort of scenario to like if we had 14 people in two two booths of seven. Oh yeah, of course. Um, like sick on offline war game in terms that happened in the past. That then then watch. you guys wouldn't be seeing our faces. You'd actually be seeing the faces of the players. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, at this point, like, this is a really cool tournament. I've been enjoying this a lot. Uh, this is really my first official World of Tanks, you know, uh, casting I've done here in Korea. Uh, I've done some in China before, uh, before doing this one here. Loving the game a lot. It's been, like, a pleasure casting with you as well, Susie. Like, I'm having a ton of fun uh, learning the personalities of these teams, you know, even these weaker teams are seeing now, like seeing how they like to play, because now when we see when they see them play again, we can know exactly how they're going to approach the situation. We're seeing them now on more maps. Uh, this has been just a ton of fun, and I know we have this like crazy downtime. That's why I'm just expressing <laughs> my my love for the game. Well, that was good. I'm proud of you. Um, yes, I, I think this is the 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 hardest part of of casting online tournaments. But yeah, you know, I enjoy casting with you too, Wolf. And hopefully you guys are enjoying our cast as well. And like we said, if you have any constructive criticism or you want to shoot us a message about anything, just tweet at us. And I'm at Lil Susie, L-I-L-S-U-S-I-E. And I'm at Proxy Wolf, P-R-O-X-Y-W-O-L-F. And Wolf. Uh, yeah, you could tell us uh, how much you love or hate us. Hopefully love us. But uh, we do this for you guys so that uh, your World of Tanks, WGL, APAC, Asia, Gold Series viewing experience can be all that much better. 
You could tweet anything at me, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd love to hear from you guys, especially about the viewing experience, but I get official feedback about that. <laughs> All right, it looks like we, we, we've had enough banter. The game is ready, Susie. All right, the game is ready. Can Run do this? We're going to have to see set number eight. Come down to this, guys. Set number eight. Run with four wins. Coalition with three. And Run is going to be on the attack. Let's look at these tanks. All right. Oh, it's a mirror matchup it again. Is. The situation is exactly the same. This really is the Time final match between these two. Uh-oh. Final countdown. Do -do -do -do. I got scared for a second because I didn't see them on the mini map. I thought they might have DC'd Coalition, but they no. did not. Okay, um, coalition is not. Everything's moving. fine. Oh, okay, no, they are moving. Whew. Yeah, it was just a, it was just a, like a bit of a. Like sometimes when we have the startup, um, the player spawns don't show on the main map right away. Um, Mafia is getting very deep in enemy territory. Oh, Whoa! Boy, what are you doing? Mafia? He's trying to bait them, I think. I think so, but the other members of Run just did not get hit at all. Mafia was the only one who, who really got any damage, and that's not good. Run. Okay. Runs through the base capture. I don't think they're actually going to. No, no, base no. Yeah, they're just trying. To, they're no. trying to get into a good position here, actually. Which, uh, at this point, is going to be it's going to be good for them. They're going to oh. get into a place where uh, they can slow these tanks from denying their cap. Ooh, Raymond wasting a shot there. That's not, that's not good. Yep. Keith is taking some damage as well, and uh, Cud got a good view on Larix. Keith needs to get out of there, though. It looks like Coalition definitely has a better view of these members, and Keith goes down. Cud is very close to dying. There he goes. Oh, boy. Base capture on two points. Meanwhile, just Kelvin is taking a tiny bit of uh, that the base capture points down to the north. It may force a reaction, but uh, they do lineage, have two IS-3s yeah. in here. But Lineage is just getting focus fired. Look at these three. Baby, Raymond, and uh, Roby one just wanting to take these tanks out. This is, again, like... They're basically just t making the, the capture point their battleground so they can cap and fight. But this is never going to be a good place to fight. Yeah, Baby though takes a bit of damage here. Lineage is trying to do... Um, he's almost done with the reload. Yeah, if Baby and shows his space... Baby does too. Who's oh. going to take the shot? Baby is like so, 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 so low. Remember, Coalition has all seven members still on this map. Yeah, which is going to give them an inherent advantage. It sure is. Mafia's and... trying to deny this capture. He will. Um, but Kelvin actually getting an advantage. Oh, Ooh. to let uh, crit hit there. Yeah. Goodbye. And now Mafia. Haku is just going to come straight in and try to take out one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, this is a double team. Scyther needs to help out here. Uh, I mean, they have a lot of, of tanks here to close into, but so many of them are in the low. The AMX to 100 is 25 seconds out. This is looking pretty hopeless. I think we're going to a tiebreaker, I Susie. think we are going into a tiebreaker, and Run almost did it. Scyther is getting focused fired from four different angles, and uh, Blackhawk is the last one left with 12 seconds and no ammo. I... yeah. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's watch this last stand here. This is like a movie yeah. where you know disaster is going to happen, but you can't stop watching like it, the, yeah. and they're going, and it's like Jaws, doo doo. Doo -doo. Tanks are coming at you, and they're going to shoot you down, and you're going to die. Oh, but not without taking one Blackhawk's down Blackhawk's like, I'm not going down without a fight. <laughs> How many can he kill? He killed two. He, he killed three. Two. Oh, oh, too slow. He's, de he's done. Oh, it's over. Oh, man. That would have been epic if he could go ahead and take out all the rest of those tanks with all of his rounds. But no, too slow. Susie, and the wolf prophecy. They're going to try to cap the point. They're going to die. You were right. You were um, right. On this map, I, it seems these two teams feel the best strat is to hope that their opponents miss and <laughs> they're going to get the point. It's literally what we saw all four games. All One, right. two, three, four. It's a, it's a risky strat. Worked zero out of four times. Yes. <laughs> so that was a bit unfortunate. But I'm really curious to see. I mean, let's, let's, let's like, don't, don't laugh when I tell you this, but like, these two teams going on Lakeville, anything could happen. Like, anything. literally anything could happen. Yeah. I have no idea. Like, bo if both teams sent all seven tanks 
and, and let's say like all seven tanks are like IS-3s. Like, let's take a look at the map so I can talk about this more. All right, let's take a look at Lakeville. <laughs> let's look at this map. <laughs> okay, so this map, this map is a map that's divided halfway in this city, as you can see here. There's actually a lake, as you might have predicted, cutting the, the city and the mountains off in between. And usually what we see on this map is teams trying to defend the capture point from the city, so taking control of the city is most important. However, you could take this mountain pass, which goes in between the mountains and the lake, or you could take the valley, which is uh, not shown in this video, but we'll, we'll talk about it as it comes up, which is going to take you a lot longer to get to, your, uh, to, get to that capture point, but uh, you're safe and no one can hit you from the city or from the pass. Right, and uh, like we said, this is the city part of it. Here we go, the aerial view. Attack starts up top, defense starts uh, on the bottom. And uh, yeah, so all the way on the left side of the map, you can see that valley like we were talking about. When you're in that valley, it's kind of hard to escape and no one can hit you because there's obviously a mountain in between. Then there's that pass. You can actually hit um, tanks into the city from that passway as well, but it also leaves you very vulnerable because there's uh, not much things to hide behind. Sure. So TACSG is going to be on the defense. Okay. And historically, on the last four sets, the defending side won. Um, I hope, if I had to predict again, this is not going to be a prophecy because I don't, I actually, I can't predict this <laughs> as, as clearly. But I knew what was going to happen last game. Run is going to try to go through the mountains and they're gonna okay. try to cap that point. They're gonna try to rush the cap. I think they're gonna try to rush the, the bottom left cap. Now keep in mind, these two teams are pretty, you know, they're pretty, both of them have pretty good preparation going into the start of all eight games that we've yes. watched, right? But going into this tiebreaker game, going into game nine, if you will, the tiebreaker, um, they might not have practiced this map as much because you don't know which map you're gonna hit until, uh, you know, unless you're gonna go to a tiebreaker. You're gonna focus on the two maps you know you're gonna play on right. no matter what. And then the tiebreaker one, we'll see it if we see it. You know, probably just a little bit, but definitely focusing on the other one. So I feel like anything could go happen here. I feel like as these teams are getting to the lobby, they're probably going, you know, you want to do that thing where we rush through the pass, or or should we take the city? Like this is happening. This discussion is happening for the first time, really, right now. Uh, yeah. And I would. It really wouldn't surprise me if we start seeing a lot of lightweight tanks on run side. We know that that's probably the strat that they're going to do. They're going to try to sneak on over and take that base. Take, they're going to send like three, four tanks on there um, and try to cap it, I think, and because that's what they did. And they get the, blown up? Not necessarily this time, but most likely. We'll see. Um, and that's yeah, just we'll don't see. laugh when I say this, but, you know, we could literally see anything on this map. Though. These teams are very creative, very uh, improvisional, um, like to uh, play things by ear, if you will. All right. Well, the game is ready, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last game of the night. Here we go, tiebreaker, game nine. Four v four, run is on the attack. Coalition decided on defense. Set nine on Lakeville. Let's look at the tanks. All right, um, three IS threes. An AMX 5100, two lightweights, and T37, that's run. So it looks more likely they're not going to be trying to rush that capture point, but instead taking the city, more standard. Um, for the coalition, three IS-3s uh, as well. Running an, an extra lightweight instead of running an AMX 5100, which I like, and we've talked about this quite a lot. Yes, the AMX 5100 on this map eh, has been very questionable, but uh, we will see how these teams play it out. Wow, Coalition, this is a beautiful town and you're just going to wreck it on the way. <laughs> man, this is, uh, this is a oh, big Oh, man. Here. So both teams just going straight for one another within this, within this town. This poor town is just going to see so much crossfire. They're going to ram right into each other. It's a 5v5 right in the middle of the city. And this is when this Blackhawk AMX 5100 is so important. He's not ready yet, okay? He's almost ready. You don't spawn with your rounds with this tank. Now he's ready. Now he's ready and he's gonna start shooting around, but he needs to connect everything. Roby one is going to be the main target for now. All right, uh, well, a lot of things are happening here. Blackhawk does get blocked there by Raymond. Nice block there, but Cud finishes him off. 
Blackhawk gets another kill on Raymond. Things are going to start to snowball here a little wow. bit. Krizib is in Krizib trouble. Krizib is in trouble. He's going to be focus fired by three different tanks now. Blackhawk needs and to get out. He's, he's on reload. Taking so much damage. Haku is also taking damage. Scyther, he's very, very low, but, but he knows uh, that he can sacrifice himself to do some damage onto that tank. Exactly. And Mafia, who was away on vacation this entire time, is now going to come home to find out his family is dead or something. I mean, <laughs> he's just coming in here and, and he's like, oh, it's already over? That's Wait right, Mafia, second. it's over. You were supposed to be here. You were supposed to be here, but now you're going to die with the rest of your brothers and run. Go ahead and take their Game first number win. nine. I'm so happy for you guys. Their first win. I am really happy for a run. I'm a little sad they couldn't do this in game eight and gotten the full three points. But you know what? A win is a win. And, and big morale booster, right? Finally got a win. Got a win under our belts. And that's really, really rad. That's it's, pretty awesome. It's, and it was a total legit win. I yeah. mean, it wasn't a given win. Okay. So after all that excitement, let's go over the entire day and what kind of results we have. Oh, all I right. am out of breath after that last series. It was a lot more exciting than the first one where B Gaming took a 5-0 win over Immortals. Immortals not even able to take a single map. Then Elon was able to beat Horseman 5-2 with very careful and awesome play. And in some cases, really fun, exciting game on steps. <laughs> yeah. And then Run versus TCSD, non-stop action for nine games, going all the way to the tiebreaker, and Run will walk away with two points. Still last place in the league behind TCSG, who has three. Hey, let's let's do, let's like be but happy for them, okay? They have a win, and it was a very legit win. And so these are the results for today. Um, it, Bleh, I can't even speak. I'm still kind of like buzzing from that last game. I'm really happy that Run was able to, you know, win a series finally. No, it was it was great. It was fun. TCSG also proving themselves in the series as well. They almost won, uh, which would have been their first real win yeah. or over their, their free win. Let's take a look at the matches that we're going to have next week. Yep. So on Monday, we have a whole new set of games for you. We've got Team Efficiency versus Immortals. Then we have TCSG versus B Gaming, and then the Karen Tigers versus Run. Yep, so uh, let's do some little predictions of how good these games are going to be. First game, awesome. Team team efficiency versus Morals, that's going to be great. TCSG versus B Gaming. I mean, we'll B Gaming, see. yeah, we'll have to see that one. B Gaming showed uh, an amazing, uh, amazing games today, so. Uh, that's a little questionable. And then Karen Tigers, number two versus number. Eight. But they did take their first win. Maybe it's going to help them maybe boost up their comments a little bit. Um, but it might be one of those Mondays where uh, we have some one-sided games. Hopefully, Team Efficiency at least will show up and show us some awesome games. Yep, uh, that's what I'm hoping for. This is Tanks, Wolf, and Anything Can Happen. And that's going to be on Monday, June 29th at 9 p.m., I believe, 9 p.m. Uh, UTC, actually, UTC no, plus 8. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's UTC plus 8. It's 9 p.m. in South Korea where we are casting from. So uh, hopefully you guys join us then again. My name is Susie Kim. This is Wolf Schroeder, and we will see you guys next week. Bye.